Welcome to Loaf, everyone. Tonight, you're going back to basics. You're baking bread. First thoughts are it's going to be a long night. Baking takes a long time. Please welcome the founder and owner of Loaf, Sean Armstrong. Hi, I'm Sean Armstrong, owner of Loaf Handcrafted Breads. Three across, eh? We're an artisan bakery that supplies retail and wholesale outlets throughout the North Island of New Zealand. Our philosophy is to deliver the best consistent product we can on a day-to-day, -day, week in, week out basis for our customers. Thanks for having us here, Sean. Now tell us, what's the secret to making great bread? Well, key ingredients, be really, really mindful of what you're weighing and what you're putting in the bowl. Take your time, you rush it, you'll be in trouble. Tonight, you'll be baking the breads for a private function at the Hilton Hotel. Not having baked bread before, in any sense. I was actually a bit freaked out by it. Each team will bake eight different types of bread, one type per team member. And in most cases, you'll be making 25 of each. You'll have eight hours to bake your breads. You must deliver them to Fish Restaurant at the Hilton by 8.30 a.m. The three of us, plus executive chef Shane Yardley, will judge your efforts. We'll each award each bread points out of 10. The team that makes the best breads overall will win the challenge and receive an excellent prize, while the lowest scoring member of the losing team will be going home. Sean, what are the breads they're going to make? These are our classic breads that we sell at Loaf. We've got a Turkish pide here. We've got a sourdough bull. We've got our ciabatta. Now that is our signature loaf. No mucking around there. If it's not right, it doesn't go. We've got a seed loaf. Croissants, another thing that you've got to really, really take your time on. Donuts, classic deep fried donut rolled in cinnamon sugar, stuffed with boysenberry jam. Really easy, but really easy to make some mistakes. Chocolate apricot pinwheel, made from a Danish style dough, so if you're on that one, take your time. And the clincher, I think, is the gluten-free spicy carrot loaf. You've got to think about how and when you make this product. Get it wrong, and it could all be over. Now, both teams will have five minutes to decide who will be making which breed. And just so we're clear on the rules, guys, you can help each other make your breads, but when it comes to judging, you must take individual responsibility for the bread you've been assigned. If you're on the losing team and your bread gets the lowest score, you will be the one going home. Your five minutes starts now. We all just sort of said, right, I'll do this, I'll do that. Who's going to do the gluten-free one? I'm actually celiac. I chose the gluten-free option. Yeah. But I may need help, so... Should I do the croissant then? Yeah. I'm a bit worried because obviously the gluten-free one's going to be really hard, but I don't... Yeah. But we can all support you and help you. Yeah. Well, I was the first to say, look, I'll take the gluten-free bread. I knew Z would be my competition. I find it quite fun to compete with him. I said I'll do the croissant. Donut. 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 Ciabatta. 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 Pinwheel. I just picked the pinwheel, which is a Danish pastry. It's incredibly difficult. Bread was probably the one thing that I was a bit antsy about and was hoping wouldn't come up. First challenge, bang, there it was. You've got eight hours to make the best bread of your life and your time starts now. Let's, let's get on to it. I have this bowl. She needs to go in first, she needs to get into the mixer. You've got to be focused for this. I ended up with seeded loaf. Not having baked bread before, we were baking a massive quantity. It was pretty scary. Pressure's on though. You can't really afford to mess it up, eh? It's fine. Yep. Hey guys, do I see a little look of terror here? Do you, do you... I think more of a look of focused oh, determination. Focus. Yeah. I hadn't actually made croissants before. A friend of ours showed me how to make them in a kitchen at home, which is a little bit different to uh, doing it on an industrial scale. Well, the thing that makes croissants so delicious is the fact that they're jam-packed with butter. You actually have to put it in a blast chiller three or four times between each time you roll it. And then go click at a time after that. If it gets too warm, when it goes through the roller, it just tears big holes in it and big globs of butter fly out everywhere. It just looks like a train wreck. Oh, that's supposed to happen. Oh, 
do I need to just start again or will that still work? I'd really just want to start for one minute the pastry is all beautiful, the next minute it's like... It's pretty heartbreaking to see but those are the things we had to be careful of. I'm making a seeded bread because yeah, it was yeah. the last one what, left what, after what, nobody else was <laughs> Looks yummy and healthy though. It was a really rustic style of bread, which fits with the type of cooking that I generally do. We can't let any of your flour contaminate any of my gluten free meals. I had to stay away from anyone that had flour on them or it was a round flour or that may contaminate my mixture. And what are you guys making over here? Uh, donuts. So you're telling me that you're making gluten-free bread on the same table that you're making something else, is that right? Yeah. He pointed out that I'm in a gluten-filled flour station with the rest of my team. Moving over there. Isn't that the whole thing about gluten-free bread, that, you know, it's completely in a self-contained place and you have no risk of contamination whatsoever? Yeah. And obviously being gluten free, I should have picked that up myself. And Chelsea, I think she actually saw that I was getting a little bit of a um, talking to and she, she picked up her gear and she quickly moved as well. And you're quite confident that that's gluten free. So if I stood here yeah. and said to Simon, I'm gluten intolerant, yeah. you'd be quite confident that I could eat that and wouldn't get sick. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I'm sure I didn't see you earlier weighing up your ingredients on a bench with gluten products, did I? can't see any flour, but of course you can't risk it. Is that a yes or a no? The call is yours. If you're confident that it's gluten free. Sean's got his reputation to stick to here, so he's not going to send anything out of here tomorrow morning if he's not 100% confident. And if he decides not to send it out, that could be you. See you later. You're in the same boat, please. Because I'll tell you what, if I send that yeah. to the Hilton tomorrow, Shane's going to be screaming down the phone to me if he has one of his guests that gets sick because they're gluten intolerant. He doesn't want to get them sent back or have anyone react to it, so... Not they won't. This is awkward. I'm a butcher. I've got the Sia Barter loaf, the signature loaf. Everyone was sort of umming and ahhing about it, so I just put my hand up and said, I'll get stuck in and take it on and give it a good crack. Sean had warned us that Sia Butter was his signature loaf and not to mess it up, so the pressure was just on. I'm just trying to keep track of how much ingredients I put in here. I started out putting all the dry ingredients into a bowl and then I actually added the water also. No, you should really actually leave it separate. You always keep your dry and your liquid separate until they go into the mixer. Right, let's start again. There was a bit of a panic at first, but once the decision was made to start again, I just got into it. Okay, sweet. There's uh, two from each team are doing a Danish pastry dough. I've got mine up and it was going through a mechanical roller. Can you just flip, can you flick it up? I was controlling the paste going through. Get the wrinkle out of it. And a piece catches in the middle on the roller and it just ripped it to shreds. So we've had a disaster. That's why I said make sure you flip the sheet out. But you didn't, so. Once the disaster happened, the pastry was ruined, just went into the bin basically, and I started from dead from scratch. What's going on now? Why are we doing a second dough? She tore. So it tore in half? Yeah, tore in half. So where is it? It's over there. So under your bench is a complete Danish dough. Yep. Right? With two kilos worth of butter. Is that correct? Yeah. What is the most expensive commodity in the world at the moment? Probably the dairy. <laughs> Butter. So you don't want to make a mistake on this one, because if you make a mistake on this one, I think your biggest problem is not going to be how big your wallet is, but it's the time, it's the clock. Because you're almost two hours behind now, aren't you? Houston, we have a problem on the pastry break. Having been at the front to start with, I'm now Dale and Charlie. Looks like it may have flour on it as well. I don't think the flour is getting into any of my mix, but you never know. The eggs that had already cracked into the mix had to be discarded. All the eggs have gone out. Why? Uh, because I was in the same situation. I was hanging out by the flour team, so I don't want to get my How, own how many eggs? I think I threw out about a 24 tray instead of putting it to the side for them to use on maybe something else. 24 eggs at 30 cents an egg. Have you got more that's eggs? That's Are there more thing? eggs? Yeah. We're just going to have to get into them. Put your, your eggs out as well. Dad, I, I didn't actually intend on keeping mine. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, great thought. In hindsight, I should have kept them, but 
I just wasn't paying attention. I just wanted to get the job done. Sorry about your food costs. Yeah, there, I mean, mate. you know. Yeah. I looked at the pinwheel and initially I thought it was going to be easy. How wrong was I? Sean looked at it and I could see steam coming out of his ears. Where's your recipe? Oh my god! What does the recipe say? It's supposed to put in the chiller. Biggest enemy in this challenge was that rolling machine and we had to use it like three, three times. You're gonna have to move real quick. Not only do you have to make another dough, you've got to clean the pastry bake. There's yeah. butter everywhere, it's a complete mess. It just was like mess. It was disaster. Nothing leaves here unless it's top notch. At Loaf Bakery, two teams of MasterChef contestants have less than four hours left to bake eight different types of bread. But so far, things haven't been going well. I love donuts. They're gonna look amazing. I'm seeing some donuts up the top that are beautiful and round. I'm seeing some down here that didn't quite get rolled well enough. Simon laughed at some of my donuts. But if you come around, see, they get better as you go. But overall, we thought they were really good. Well, I guess the sooner you cook them, the better, huh? Yeah. Ah! I never knew that donuts were deep fried. You don't really think about donuts in this way. They're really not healthy. <laughs> this is fun. Damn. This isn't mine. This is for the uh, pinwheels. This is a team challenge. So it's everybody pull together, all for one and one for all. That was the sort of general approach we had. He had that to the underside and the folded bit on the top. Don't know if it makes any difference, no, but uh, make a difference. Well, I'd, go, I'd go with exactly what he did. It's, it's, I'd go with it's flour, it won't make any difference. Tony seemed a little bit slack. I felt that at times I had to just give a little assertion. We're running way behind. Get the skin on it and just get, get it, make it, start to make it a bit malleable. I think he thought I was slacking or I was being too casual but I was just trying to pace myself by that stage. You don't want to put them in a hole ready to go, so you're not relying on them. It's a team, mate, it's team. He tends to drag things out a bit and he sort of overreacted a little bit. He, he sort of took it a little bit too far. I think Tony needs to make sure that he's focused, totally focused on the task in that's at hand. Not say it's all there, might be ready to go. It will be ready to go. We will have it ready to go. We are going to win this challenge. It's not, don't fart around and fluff around, mate. Get it ready. Get it ready. I tell you what I can tell you, everybody. I'm seeing Sean walk around this bakery looking really nervous and looking at his watch all the time. And you guys are just like cruising. It's all about being on time. Actually rolling out the croissants um, from triangles, my first attempt was not that pretty. What is that? <laughs> it was my first attempt. That is just, oh, I'm glad you find it funny, I think it's disgusting. Sorry, sorry. Come on, triangle. That is beautiful, thank you. Done. It was a bit embarrassing because I think he was a bit panicked at what the result would be. Crank it. We were gelling better than the other team. We had actually just put our first loaves in the oven. And it goes. The first batch of bread's just gone in from the red team. Literally just gone in the oven, and we need to get our seeded loaf in there. Blue team, you ready with your seeded loaves? Let's go, ready for this? No way. Yeah, you're all gonna get out. I'm not sure why the fire alarm went off. There was no fire. Out to the front car park, please. Preferably away from the building, folks, because if it does go up in smoke, you might want to be away from it. Once we got out into the car park, we were still very determined. We were still going through the plans of what we were going to do once we got back in. Their bread's going to overproof. Yeah. yeah. My bread's going to overproof. What about your donuts? We need to get our bread in the oven, otherwise it's going to overproof. It seems forever the fire trucks to get there. We were just about to put our bread in the oven and all hell's broken loose. <laughs> Pulled out of bed, dragged here, making bread at ridiculous hours in the morning, and then now we're standing outside in the freezing cold, waiting for them to turn the fire alarm off. No fire. I'm not quite sure what the story is. Come on, come on. We got oh. bread proving. Yeah, we got bread proving. We got bread in the oven. I think we ended up waiting outside for the fire brigade for about half an hour. You all go back in. 
We finally get let back in, and you can just see our breads totally overproved. They rose up too much and got a bit sticky. Wow, it looks a sticky little business. What went wrong? It wouldn't be the flour thing, would it? It turns out we didn't actually put enough flour on the bread mats. Take your time. Gentle. When we Gentle. were ready to put the tear butter dough into the oven, we didn't put enough semolina down on the tray first, which is when the problem started to snowball. Make sure it locks in. Yeah, that's it. Slid the tray into the oven. There you go, come on. Pulled it out again. Oh, did you guys semolina your feel? Look at that. Well done, red team. Look at that. And it just ripped the dough and pulled it out with the tray and onto the floor. Okay. So, how do you reckon think we recover from this team? Yeah, I was pretty gutted at that point. I suggest you get a dough scraper and you scrape all of this off the peel and clean the oven. Come on, let's go, because now you're holding up the blue team, so their breed's overproving. Don't put a hole in my cloth. Sean wasn't too happy with the mess we left on his oven. Not much chance of recovery from that one. Just stuck. Well, it's a really sticky dough anyway, Chibata. Yeah, so what a disaster. They are deep, deep, deep in trouble. And right now, Sean is not happy at all. In fact, he's decidedly pissed off. off. I just had to salvage whatever dough I could and get as much of it in the oven. It's red team that's gone downtown in there, is it? Oh, thank God. This helps my chances greatly. So I think my equity's just gone up. I really hope you've learned from the last mistake, right? Because that was disastrous. It's a very good day to be wearing blue. <laughs> but things could change, you never know. Are we going to get some sense of urgency? Somebody from the blue team? Anyone from the blue team? Anyone from the blue team? You're waiting to get chia butter in, right? Yes, yeah. You've got beautiful chia butter, and right now the red team is holding you up. Are you going to get in and help them? Are you going to push them? Are you going to give them some knocking? What's going on? My initial instinct is, I need to help these guys. Even though they're the opposition, I need to get my bread in the oven. This is master chef. There's going to be somebody going home today, and these guys are screwing you up. Even some of the blue team got in and helped, which was great, but I think it actually caused more problems because we weren't talking to each other. Come on, guys, move it, move it, and on good quality ciabatta, and don't make it stick to the peel again. You better make it quick, because blue team's ciabatta is looking fantastic, and you are ruining it for them. We need to get this out. Get it out now. And the pressure is really on. Just, just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Oh, you've done it again! And that's when all hell broke loose. Yeah, the same thing happened twice. It's falling apart. Are we going to get some sense of urgency? Right. Let's go! I really hope you've learned from the last mistake. When we put the jeer butter dough into the oven, it was sticking to the tray. Oh, you've done it again! Oh, disastrous. Clean it up, Red Team. You're out of here. Sean was a bit amused, I think, that we'd actually done it twice. What am I going to tell my customers today, guys? you got half an oven of jabata. I hope it's enough. I ended up getting 12 loaves instead of 25. You've made an absolute mess of my oven. It would have sat all of you by now, all right? Come on. I was so gutted because it's my bread that was up next, the cheap butter. It was perfect. I was so happy with it, and I was so worried it was going to overproof. So fingers crossed it hasn't, and it still comes out well. I know we're tired, and we should get through this, OK? Yeah, but work as a team. Team challenge, remember? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, let's do it. Two hours to go, everybody. Just two hours. Your bread should be in the oven. Gently, up here. Just that way. Back on track. I start laying it on as quick as I can, but gently. No, we need some more. We need some more. Find it, find it down. Simulina, simulina, simulina. I want to make sure this is perfect. Is it locked in? It's been a long, long night so far, guys. Keep it going, eh? All right. Look at that. All right. How good is that? Just one hour left. 60 short minutes. You guys are fast running out of time. I'm just an amateur cook from Rotorua. This is my first attempt at making pastry. I don't want to let the company down. They have to deliver this to Hilton. I just hope it's good enough. We need to put this out of the bread in the oven, blue team. Gentle, gentle, gentle. You spend all this time making dough. Don't treat it like something you throw in the backyard. 
You're down to the last half hour. If your bread isn't in the oven yet, you're cutting it mighty fine. It was down to the wire the last few minutes. There were times when we thought that we may not get enough bread out to the customers. Is it ready? You're seated low. Be careful, run, you'll fall over. We actually might have some more right looking sourdough. Easy, take your time. I'm just watching it, I'm so excited. I, I'm just looking at my loaves thinking, I've created this. It just smells awesome, it looks great, fantastic colour. We lost a few of them, stuck to the tray, but hopefully there's, we'll get a few out of it. That's Regardless of the outcome, we worked really hard today. We're all we yeah. And we came through adversity, Eddie boy. I ended up with 12 loaves. I wasn't sure if we were going to be penalised for being short. OK, blue team and red team, I've got some news for you. You only need to select the 10 best. And that might be good news for some of you. Did breathe a sigh of relief. Gave me a fighting chance. 8 o'clock, everybody's out the store. Good luck to you all. Well, it gives me a glimmer of hope, but I still haven't got much to choose from here. Right. I've left two out. Oh, look, I don't think it went too bad. You know, we had a series of disasters throughout the night, but um, they've surprised me and they turned out quite a good product. When we got to the Hilton, we have been up all night. My whole nervous system just felt shot. And it was quite intense, the feeling when you came into the room and the judges were there and there was the head chef from the Hilton and he was quite commanding. Hi, my name's Shane Yardley. I'm currently head chef at Fish Restaurant at the Hilton Auckland. My cooking philosophy is fairly simple actually. Use the best to create the best. Using the best ingredients in season, you get the best results and the best product. I think simplicity is a good thing. If you look at all the great chefs around the world, the philosophy behind food is keep it simple, stupid. Well, I'll tell you what, you've both got some pretty good looking bread there. Quietly confident? Yeah, I think it looks okay. Either of you putting your hand up to be a baker? No way. Not in the near future. Well done, guys. Go and grab some shut eye. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. The judges must have had a really hard time, I think, picking a winner out of that lot. Anna's has got this real authentic look where you've got your fingers in here just going down the loaf just prior to going in the oven. What I do like is the generous use of the seeds from Andy. They put caraway on it as well, which is lovely. I think the extra seeds are actually what makes yeah. it better. Time to score, team. I put 120% into getting that product on the tray, and there was nothing left. I'd given it all. The croissant twins, huh? But not identical. Chelsea, these are very big. Al, these are a bit smaller. What's going on here? Started off at that size and kept on going, and I guess perhaps it was a little on the generous side. I did kind of have that in the back of my mind, but because they looked pretty nice, I just decided that they were probably good. <laughs> How was your evening in the kitchen, Al? Interesting. Easier to drive a truck than it is to drive a pastry break, and I, I didn't think that would be the case. OK, thanks, guys. We'll have a taste. The size of this is, I mean, it's massive. You could paddle to Waikato in this. But when you look at them, the texture inside's all wrong. It's like brioche, mm. you know? It's like cake. You can see the, see, see how crumbly it is? Whereas a croissant should be flaky. We really see some layering here, but with Chelsea's, we're not seeing any at all. For me, they're not very good examples at all of croissants. So Shane, you are saying that neither of these would make your kitchen Definitely not. No, no, no. Time to score, team. Tony's was falling apart a little bit. This one seems to be holding together and a lot nicer, and it's got a nice sheen to it. It's got a lot of nice moisture in Charlene's. It's definitely the better. The glaze is a lot more prevalent, and there's a lot more raisins in it, too. Are we all going to have one each of these donuts? Of course we are. Yeah, yeah why not? Donuts. Yeah. All right. The only thing that I can really tell that's different 
It's the shape. If I was to choose, yeah, much and muchness as well. So who's got the better bread, Zeke? Um, I'm going to have to say mine. Mine was flatter along the surface, and hers was more geographic. It's a polite way of putting it. Chelsea, was it tough? Yeah. Did you feel like giving up at any stage? Yeah. Why? Because it was a long night. I was very tired. I think the judges tried to make me crack a little bit. But I'm not going to be emotional now. Yeah. Sleep well. This is Z's. It really needs a bit of cutting and the colour. But there's not a lot of moisture in there, is it? They've sort of dried out and something's gone on here. Something started to work when it shouldn't have done. And this is Chelsea's one. The size of the loaf's a little bit different. I find Chelsea's a bit smaller than Z's. I'm getting a lot of baking soda and a lot of sort of, I don't know how they did this if you cook it for an hour and a half or whatever, but raw spice flavor. Matt, how did you go? All the excitement and yelling has uh, made me lose my voice, so. It's, um, but I'm really, really happy with how my sheer butter's come out. When I saw matched year butters, they were perfect. They looked just like I bought one, so I wasn't too confident at that stage. Ben, how did you go? Not too well, as you saw, but I managed to get 10 loaves out. Happy with them? They're not too bad. They, they feel good. They tasted all right. Ben, unfortunately, had a shocker. I felt so bad for him. See you later. Thank you. OK, guys, we should score this. With Andrea's sourdough, the crust is in there and it's an integral part of the sourdough. I couldn't fault Dave's sourdough. I think it's absolutely perfect. We've got two examples of the seeded loaf here. Chantelle, how did you go with this? It doesn't look exactly how I would like it to look. How would you like it to look? A bit more like his. <laughs> it was overproofed and I didn't make any excuses because I knew that's what had happened. Have you made bread before? No. Pizza dough. This is the first attempt at bread. Cold, all through the middle of the night, with a recipe you've never seen before. Really interesting. I feel like I went pretty good in, in comparison to Chantelle. That was the only difference really, is that mine had risen and hers were a little bit flatter. If you look closely at Chantelle's, you can just see the dark lines around the outside where it's overproved. But Brenton's is nothing short of sensational, really, is it? Brenton's loaf, for me, is the best thing I've tasted all day. In the restaurant, no qualm in serving that at all. Absolutely fabulous. Well, guys, we now know which team has won, and we know who on the losing team has the lowest score. Shall we head?